Greetings! You're listening to KLLG LP Radio, 97.9 FM from Willits, California. And now, for our next installment of Radio Theater, KLLG and the Willits Community Theater proudly present the science fiction radio play Deep Freeze, written by James C. Ferguson. So strap in, and please enjoy the WCT Project Ibsen winner, Deep Freeze. Ah, Mr. Wolf, you're awake. Welcome back. Beautiful day. How are you feeling? Um, uh, uh... Good, good. I wouldn't try to run a marathon anytime soon, but other than that, overall, I'd say... What? Your vitals look good. Your teeth look good. Your eyes look very good. You're a good-looking fellow, Mr. Wolf. A good-looking fellow. I can see why you're an actor. You're one of those people that just lights up a room, even with the lights off and the blinds pulled and tape over that little red light on the carbon monoxide detector. The entertainment industry has definitely missed you since you've been in here, Mr. Wolf. I'm not saying these other people can't act, but they don't have that thing, you know. They don't have whatever it is. When you're up to it, I have a stack of autograph requests from the staff, the things these people want you to put your signature on. Don't worry, I told them no body parts. Well, that cost extra. It does? I'm kidding. That's, um... Uh... <laughs> yes, of course. Good one. Anyway, I'm going to keep you hooked up to the fluids for now, but I want you to start drinking as much water as you can, okay? We're also going to try to get your physical therapy going. ASA... <sighs> Whoa! Easy there, Superman. You all right? I told you, take it slow. Don't overdo it. You've been, well, how's your appetite? I'm a little, you know... Uh, Peckish? Uh, hungry. Hungry? Really? That's wonderful. Hungry is much better than peckish. Not as good as famished or ravenous, but your chart says you like that sushi place in Beverly Hills on Rodeo. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but unfortunately, that place closed. I'll see if I can find an equivalent. Knock, knock. Hey, there he is. How you doing, Charlie? I got a message that somebody is up, alert and ready to rock and roll. You look good. Great, even. Get this man a close-up. How you doing, Doc? I'm Winnie. I'm Mr. Whoop's agent. That's not my real name. Of course, people just call me that because I win things. I'm a winner. Sometimes people accidentally type, Whiner, but <laughs> I know they don't do it intentionally. I try not to take it personally. We've met. We have? Several times. <laughs> well, sorry about that. I have uh, six clients on different long-running medical dramas and uh, another 12 in various medical facilities around the country. It's, it's a lot to keep track of. Uh, I get, you know, here's my card. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. You really do look great considering... Can I do this? I'm not going to catch, you know... Cancer? Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Great! Look at you! Look at him! The Wolf of Westwood. I wanted to call him the uh, Hammer, so he could be the Hammer of Hollywood, but I was outvoted. What do I know? Sounds better, though. Don't you think? Hair looks good. Complexion. Good eyes. Very good. Oh, boy. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? Oh, Charlie. I thought we were friends. You wound me, sir. I wanted to see how you were doing because I care, buddy. You are and always have been my number one priority. I say the same thing to Tom Cruise, but I don't mean it. Uh, you look uh, different. Do uh -huh. I? Uh, well, well, I am mortal after all. I, I don't have the genes of a god like yourself. There's 
No way I could go through what you've gone through and look as good as you do. Does he know about, um... No. Right, okay. Your hair? What about... Oh, hi, you're right there. Should you be out of bed? Should he Should he be out of bed, Doc? It uh, used to be gray. Ing, uh, gray ing. Uh, the last time you and I saw one another, it was. You see, Doc, I had a salt and pepper thing going. Uh, it turned gray eventually. Then it fell out. So I got this. It's a fake. They tell me it's hypoallergenic and I think made out of dolphin hair. I could be wrong about that last part. It looks pretty good, don't you think? Uh, also, uh, um, uh, the glasses? Oh. You didn't used to wear glasses, did you? No, I didn't. I got these, um, these are mostly for distance. Do you want me to tell him? No, I, I'm building up to it. You can't just drop something like this on somebody. They look... I'm a people person. I know how people work. I know how he works, specifically. You have to handle these things delicately. Steven? Hum? Oh, me. <laughs> right. That's my real name, Doc. It's, it's not very... Uh, anyway, uh, do you want to sit? No? Uh, there's no way to tell you this without just telling you. So, because you're my friend... Because I respect you. I, I'm just gonna... You've been on ice for about 13 years. 12 years, 8 months, 5 days, and 11 and a half hours. What she said. We had a party for you at 10. Don't worry, it was very tasteful. No strippers. <laughs> I know you don't like that kind of thing. No, no, hold on. Back up. I don't understand. You said I've been... What? You've been on ice. That's what they call it anyway. We don't. It's a form of cryonics. Suspended animation. I suppose you could also say that it's sort of like an induced coma. Really? Yeah. Are you telling me I've been asleep for 13 years? A little less than that, apparently. But essentially, yeah. And that's, uh... Nuts, I know, right? We've been monitoring you the whole time, of course, 24-7. And we've been paying your bills. Everything has been taken care of. Or you've been <laughs> snoozing. All your stuff is exactly how you left it. What about my wife? What about Mira? You were married? <laughs> I thought she was just your girlfriend. <laughs> I'm kidding. I remember. I was at the wedding, I think. Was I? I was... Kind of hoping you wouldn't ask about her. I I don't want to dampen the good mood here, but a couple of years after you went under, the, the status of your wife's <clears throat> citizenship or lack thereof became uh, kind of an issue. We tried to intervene on her behalf, but turns out the United States Immigration and Customs Enforcement people don't want a multi-million dollar reality show. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. There's, there's nothing we could do. They bounced her back to Guatemala. She was from Algeria. I know. It's a, a lot to process. You want my assistant to get us some tapas or something? Give me your phone. That's the year? Yes. Are you sure this thing's working? Yes. I don't... Uh, you weren't kidding. I, I was hoping you were kidding. On the good news front, the Seattle Mariners finally won a World Series. This is unbelievable. It is. It really is. A hell of a lot's changed, buddy. Uh, everybody finally got jetpacks. And what about my cancer? You still have it. Am I still terminal? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I guess some things haven't changed. That's uh, one of the reasons they wanted to put you on ice in the first place. Give you a little more time. Maybe while you were uh, snoozing, they figure the whole thing out. Find a cure. Wouldn't that be exciting? Have you? No. I'm sure they're working on it. All the time. I don't remember authorizing this. I didn't ask for this. No, that's true. You didn't. Not uh, directly. But you did agree to it in your contract. I did? Yes, sir.
This isn't just a bunch of boilerplate BS. We cut and paste for any Yahoo with a walk on. No, sir. This is some top tier stuff, my friend. Reserved for a very small and elite group. The best of the best. You made us a lot of money. We want to help you help us. That's how this relationship works, Charlie. Let me tell you something, pal. There are one-line Johnnies and Janes out there that dream about having perks like this in their contracts. I had a hunch this might come up. Here, section 12, subsection 4, paragraph 3. See? In the case of a life-threatening emergency or terminal illness, you give us your representation the right to put you to sleep for a little bit while we review your options. As long as you're not working. If you remember, you were just finishing up that thing with Char- Charlize Theron uh, when you got your diagnosis. Once you were done with that, we talked to the doctors and one chloroform-soaked rag later, voila, here we are. We did not use a rag. Well, I- I'm trying to provide a little levity here, jeez. Uh, based on the nature of your diagnosis and the timetable of things, we thought it was a uh, prudent to act as quickly as possible. Why? Why what? Why would you do this at all? Why would you want to do this? Because it's in your contract. Look, you didn't have to sign the thing, Charlie. We explained it to you in considerable detail. But I don't remember any of this. I understand. You just woke up. You're bound to be a little fuzzy. It will most likely all come back to you at some point. Most likely? Nothing in this world is ever 100% certain, Mr. Wolf. It's all right here, buddy. See? I know the print is small and there's some typos, but uh, (laughs) it's right after all those clauses you had us put in about never working with any kind of real animals, politicians, or former astronauts. (laughs) Come on, buddy. Don't be like that. You're still here, aren't you? You're still alive. Technically, yes. Alive. Not living, and not really. Well, if you're gonna pick nits... I've been comatose for over a decade. Look, I know it isn't an easy thing to think about or talk about, but your diagnosis is terminal. I know that. So, you only have so many days left with us, my friend. We don't want to waste them. We want to make every moment that you're up and about and able to jump out of a plane count. Speaking of... Let's focus on the positive for a second. I think I have some news that's going to make you a very happy fellow. We could have woken you up earlier, but I wasn't comfortable doing that for any old offer that came across my desk. No, sir! You're one of the biggest stars in the world, possibly the universe, since they're beaming a couple of your most popular movies out into space. I'm not going to waste one of the few days you have left on some Philistine talk show appearance or a wart remover commercial. No! You're going to bring me back to do a wart remover commercial? No, I I wasn't. That was the point. Uh, However, I did bring you back to read a script for a project by one of the hottest new young up-and-coming writers around co-starring one of the hottest new young up-and-coming actresses around directed by Alyssa Jarvie. You wouldn't know her. (laughs) She's also kind of new. Very good. Also, finish. Uh, You're gonna love it. There's this plane sequence. Well, I I won't spoil it. You uh, put me on ice just so you could wake me up for this? We sure didn't. I, I think it's got real potential. It's going to be great. You're going to be great. Is there a dog? Uh... I like movies with dogs. What was the one where they eat the meatballs? I like that one. That is a very good movie. Everything I knew is either gone or different, and you just want me to You just... should not get so excited. Winnie, he should not get so excited. All right, all right, look. Just read the script. It'll make you feel good. It's a real page turner. My entire world is different. I know the situation seems less than ideal, but there are some positives. Like? 
Well, we've been making sure your bills are getting paid the whole time. So the Bentley, the fishing boat, and that organic lentil farm you bought, those are all completely paid off as well as all the people who knew things about things that you didn't want anyone else to know. You know, do you have a picture of uh, the woman who, uh, um, my co-star? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Be still my heart, am I right? Uh, height? Five foot seven. So she'd be shorter than me. Oh, yeah. Age? Well, her resume says she's 27, but I think she's around 42, 43. Married? No, uh, not anymore. She was. My understanding of the situation is that it was kind of spontaneous thing. There was a lot of whiskey involved, and uh, <laughs> it didn't work out. Does she have a dog? Is there any nudity? I think you take your socks off in one scene, but that's it. Does that count? Well, there are a lot of words in this script. They're working on that. <laughs> that could work. Hmm. What if I say no? Um, well, that's your prerogative, of course. But, as your agent, I would at least encourage you to sit with it for a bit. Not too long, obviously, but think about it. Mole. Give it its due. You're the only person... They're going to with this thing. So, there's no rush. It would not take too long. No, no. But you don't want to just go with your gut in a situation like this. You really have to consider all the various particulars. Uh, you didn't answer my question. What if, in the end, after really thinking it through, what if at that point I say no? At that point, well, I guess... Uh, they put you back to sleep, back on ice. Bye-bye. For how long? That's hard to say. Good projects aren't easy to come by these days, even for an actor of your uh, stature. Look how long it took us to find this. It would be a great paycheck, great awards potential, too. They give out so many awards now, there's got to be something we can put you up for. Oh, what if I say yes? What if I agree to do this thing? Then what? Well, obviously, we'd want to keep you around for reshoots, uh, ADR. Okay, but when all that's finished, that's what I'm asking. When I've done everything I need to do contractually, then what happens? Well, uh, then well, you'd, uh, you know, you'd go back. Uh, yeah. I don't want to be morbid, but if you only have so many days left, you don't want to waste any, do you? So essentially, I'm a prisoner, and that's what you're telling me. No. I'm a prisoner of my own signature? Please try not to get excited. I don't get a choice in any of this? Yes, you do. Of course you do. You get to choose if you want to do this project or not. That's a choice. You're my representation. You're supposed to be looking out for my interests. We are. You work for me. We do. Whatever you earn, we only take 25%. I thought it was 10. It was. It went up about eight, maybe nine years ago. 25% is the industry standard. Still, the bulk of it all goes to you. And what the hell am I supposed to do with it? Whatever you want, that is your decision entirely. We don't want to micromanage your choices or infringe on your personal freedoms. As long as you pay all your medical bills, which are numerous, this isn't exactly a cheap undertaking. Most people don't get to cheat death like this. You're a very lucky person. How am I cheating anything? I'm still dying. True, but not quite as quickly. Think about this. Maybe when they wake you up the next time... They'll have found a cure for this thing. Wouldn't that be exciting? That is a remote possibility, I suppose. We gotta work on your bedside manner, Doc. I'm just trying to be realistic. I don't want him to get his hopes up. This is why doctors don't get tips. Uh, Winnie, I think... Uh... You're in! Great! Let me get you a pen. Hey, Doc, do you have a pen? Hold on. Pump the brakes for a second, will ya? I can see why you're pushing this project. It's not horrible, but... <clears throat> but? I think at the end of the day, I'm going to have to say no. You're passing? Doc, 
Is he saying passing? I don't know what that means. It means no. Nine. Non. Bushing. Shoot. I'm not going to do this project. I'm not going to let you put me back, you know. On ice? Correct. I don't think you can say no to that. I think I just did. You'd be in breach of contract, uh, if... If what? Hmm. If I want to be the one to decide what I do with whatever time I have left. Charlie, buddy, be reasonable. I don't want to have to sue you. You're going to sue me? I don't want to. Lawsuits are expensive. They... They tie up time and resources. We're already embroiled in this thing with the writer who wrote the script for that Edible Arrangements movie a few years ago. I don't want to spend my entire day talking to lawyers. You aren't exactly leaving me a lot of choices here, Winnie. It's better than not having any choices at all about anything. Why are you giving me such a hard time about this thing? I busted my butt trying to put this deal together for you. You're not going to get a better deal than this, Charlie. And it's a better deal than you've ever gotten before. Don't go getting all Aguilera on me, man. Just say yes to the friggin' deal, and we can all move on. I was supposed to be at that thing at two. Uh... I know. I'm late. I'm supposed to meet these people at a fondue place. I really hate fondue. I think you're missing the point. I don't think I am. I think you're being a prima donna. This is my life. I'm not your stinking puppet. What the hell are you going to do with yourself? Sit around your five-bedroom, six-and-a-half bathroom house in your monogrammed cashmere pajamas, drinking beet smoothies, rearranging your self-portrait collection, waiting for the end? Your wife's gone. Your friends have all moved on. Your pets are all dead. At least this way, you have something to do. Sign. Fine. Fine. I'll do it. Just give me a pen. Finally. Wait, you're not just agreeing to do this so you can get uh, to set and slip away when no one's paying attention in a golf cart and make a new life for yourself in Melbourne, uh, are you? No. No! I've seen the error of my ways. You're right. I'm wrong. Pen. Good. Finally. That was a thing. You won't regret this. I'm sure I won't. I promise. Okay, fun time is over. My patient needs to get his rest. Back to bed, Mr. Wolf. I am feeling a little... uh, I'm exhausted. Lay down. Get some rest. You are still very weak. I'm just gonna uh, shut my eyes... For a minute, I am... Uh... Is he asleep? Like a baby. How did I do? What? Oh, great. You're a regular Lawrence. Uh, what's his name? You made me think you were a real doctor. I almost started asking you about my bone spurs. Uh, you can't compete with this guy, though. This guy. He was very lifelike. He was. I agree. I I didn't catch a single glitch this time, did you? No, and his arms didn't fall off this time. Progress. How's the body? Still perfectly preserved. I checked on it this morning. You didn't accidentally turn the freezer off again, did you? No. I double-checked everything. How long has he been dead? About eight and a half years. Did he actually have cancer? No, I added that to the copy a few years ago. So how did he die? That's an excellent question. No one's quite sure. When they found him, he was just lying there, face down in the middle of the fairway, pitching wedge in one hand, a red plastic cup of unidentified hard liquors on ice in the other. The autopsy remained vague about the official cause of death, never quite confirming or denying anything. The cops said there were some uh, footprints around the body that were never identified, He did occasionally run around with some (laughs) questionable characters. So who knows what that's all about. At the end of the day, unfortunately, he's the only one who knows what really happened. And he's not talking. The good news is we were able to get our hands on the body almost immediately and preserve it perfectly. 
It really is astounding. <sighs> this guy looks as good dead as he did alive. If he jumped out of a window or drowned or gotten himself tangled up in a thresher or something, none of this would have been possible. He wouldn't be possible. The body has to be in tip-top condition to make a copy of this quality. So, he's like a robot or something. No, he's not a robot or something. Well, something, yes, but not a robot. That would be idiotic. This isn't Buck Rogers. You can't build a lifelike robot that looks and acts like a multi-million dollar Korean Association of Film Critics award-winning celebrity that does what you want it to when you want it to. No, this is an extremely complicated, three-dimensional, digital recreation, patent pending. This has never been done before. I mean, we have, but not well. We got pretty close a few years ago, but then one day, he just randomly turned green. I was able to book him in this sci-fi thing. But then, halfway through the shoot, he started calling everyone Lionel. So that didn't work out. A couple of them. I was able to book in things if the director kept him really far away from the camera. This version, I think, I can actually stop booking in some of the big gigs. Get him his actual quote again, finally. I'm not sure he's quite ready for a love scene yet. Uh, that last time we tried that, he exploded. The other person was not pleased. You want to help me uh, get him back into the lab? Do you mind if you pay me first? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, I can do that. Do you mind if I give you a check? Is it going to bounce? <laughs> no, it shouldn't. Just uh, don't cash it till next Tuesday, okay? <laughs> You've been listening to Deep Freeze, a science fiction radio drama produced by the Willits Community Theater and brought to you by Radio KLLG LP 97.9 in Willits, California. Deep Freeze was chosen for recording through WCT's Project Ibsen, and we will be presenting the rest of the award winners in the coming months. Deep Freeze was written by James C. Ferguson and directed and engineered by Kevin H. C. Moore. Our voice cast consisted of Aris Vellis as Mr. Wolf, Jeff Shipp as Winnie, and Kathy Vellis as The Doctor. The Willits Community Theater would like to thank its sponsor, the NC Financial Group, for its continuing support. For your enjoyment, the Willits Community Theater is currently streaming selected shows from our archives at their new website, wctperformingartscenter.org. Please look forward to future WCT radio shows on KLLGLP at this same time. So, until next time, this is Kevin H. Seymour signing off. <laughs>